Well, here we go again, lesson 11. We're still in section 6.5, trigonometric graphs. Oh, that's an old dog we used to have. She really minded well. Watch this. Stay. Good dog. Let's do a little bit of review from our previous lesson. Find the amplitude, period, and phase shift. And the first thing you notice is that A is 3, B is a half, and C is negative 1 fourth. And so amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A, and so our amplitude is 3. The period, 2 pi over B, since B is a half, 2 pi divided by 1 half, 2 pi over 1 times the reciprocal gives us 4 pi. The phase shift is negative C over B. Now our C was already negative, so this is the negative of negative pi over 4 over B. Careful here. Quite often students, having just calculated the period, will confuse B and the period and move the period down there. You have to go back to the equation. There's a half. Half goes in there. So negative and negative makes a positive. Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and we end up with pi over 2 for our phase shift. Let's do another one. By the amplitude, period, and phase shift, notice A is 4, B is 2, and our C is pi. So amplitude is the absolute value of A, so it's 4. Period is 2 pi over the absolute value of B, so 2 pi over 2 equals pi. And our phase shift is negative c over b, and that's just negative pi over 2. So I want to remind you that phase shift is true. This graph is moving to the left. It lies like a dog up here. Let's do another one. Uh, a is 2, the b is pi, and the c is a positive pi over 2. I'm guessing this graph, we're going to have a negative phase shift. And amplitude is 2. That wasn't too bad. 2 pi over b, 2 pi over pi, so our period is 2. So if we were to sketch this, we would actually lay out a ha four hash marks to the right and put a 2 out there, and, that, and, and that's how we would lay out our, our x-axis. Phase shift is negative c over b, negative pi over 2 over, I wrote it as pi over 1, so that when I take the reciprocal of it, I, I see that a little better. Pi is cancel, and we end up with a phase shift of negative one half. So this graph is moving to the left uh, because we have a negative phase shift. Oh, one more. And by the way, phase shift, a period phase shift, and amplitude doesn't change regardless of whether it's sine or cosine. You you calculate them the same way. Now here my a is negative five, my b is pi, and I have no c. So there's no phase shift on this one. Your amplitude is still 5, the absolute value of A. Period is 2 pi over B, so that's 2 pi over pi, which is 2. Uh, it's the same period we had before. And we have no phase shift here. So this thing is a cosine. This graph is a cosine curve. It'll start at the max and head down normally. But because there's a negative here, we'll actually start at the bottom and head up. And we're just, we're just looking for amplitude, period, and phase shift, so we're not sketching these out right now. All right, here's a question to you. Is this a sine or a cosine curve? And I'm, I'm actually doing a, uh, a pause here, waiting for you to give me the answer, which, which I can't hear you, of course. Um, and most students will tell me this is a sine curve. And I'll say, yeah, why can't it be a cosine curve? You really, just looking at this, you can't tell if it's sine or cosine. In fact, I can give you an equation of sine, and I can give you an equation of cosine that describes this graph perfectly. Sine and cosine are pretty much the same graph. It's just one's moved over a little bit. Well, let's say it's a sine curve. I, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this graph long enough and we're going to come up with A, B, and C and we're going to come up with the equation. So we're going to agree that it's a sine curve. And that way half of you aren't doing cosine curves and half of you aren't doing sine curves. Now my question to you is A positive or negative? Well, if A is negative, then this would rotate it over the x-axis. But again, if I wanted to rotate this over the x-axis, I could just change the phase shift to make it look just like this again. So we're going to say that A is positive. Now I, B, the same deal. B could be positive or negative. If B is negative, it flips the graph over the y-axis. But again, if I want to flip it over the y-axis and then change the, period, uh, the phase shift, I can make this graph look just like this one. So let's assume that B is positive as well. Now phase shift. This is C is related to your phase shift. Well, there's an infinite number of phase shifts. Here's a phase shift. There's a phase shift. Anywhere it's going up through the x-axis is a phase shift. I see four phase shifts on this one. One, two, three, four. And if I let you pick whatever phase shift you want, we're going to end up with an infinite number of c values. 
So we're going to ask you to pick the phase shift that makes C the least positive real value. Now if B is positive, which we've stated, if we want C to be positive, that means we need a negative phase shift. So I'm looking left of the y-axis until I see it going up through the x-axis, and there it is. That's our phase shift right there. Because normally this thing goes up through the, up through the uh, origin here. And it, right there it is. Now again, if I let you pick this one way over here, we'd have it would be a positive value for C, but it would be bigger than the least positive. So we're all going to agree that this right here is going to be our is going to be our, our phase shift. All right. So for each graph, we're going to find the amplitude, period, and phase shift. And now from that, we're going to find a, b, and c, so that we can write the equation in the form of y equal a sine b x plus c, a positive, b positive, and the least positive value you can find for C. Now again the only reason we're making these restrictions is so we can all agree on one answer. There's an infinite number of equations that will describe every graph I'm going to show you in this lesson. Sine, cosine, positive negative A, positive negative B, and then an infinite number of positive negative C's will all describe the same graph. But let's just do it this way so we can all agree on one answer. Here's your first one. And you need to find the amplitude the period and the phase shift. Here, amplitude is pretty nice because it's from the average to the max. My amplitude is 3, so the A is going to be 3. And that's not too tough. Period. Period is one full cycle. So I'm starting here at the origin. It's The graph is heading down. I'm going to follow this curve until I see it going down through the x-axis ah, right there. And now that distance from the origin to that point represents one period. If you look, if that's pi over 2, then that must be pi, and that's 3 pi over 2. And so this one has a period of 2 pi. Now, phase shift. I want the least positive real value for C, so I need a negative phase shift, and I want to find the first one. So I go left until I hit, oh, there it is right there. And that's my phase shift, because that's the first zero, the first time across the x-axis before the first max. So that distance right there, and again, if that's pi over 2, then this would be negative pi over 2, and that would be negative pi. My next slide will show this all in detail. Oh, a lot of nice arrows there, huh? So there's my period. My period. I, I, I normally, the curve goes up to the origin. So um, I, I looked here. Oh, let me talk about phase shift. I'm sorry. It normally goes up to the origin. So I looked left until I saw that it was going up through the x-axis, and that distance represented my phase shift, negative pi. Phase shift will always be negative so that we can have a positive value for C. And then for the period, I saw where it was heading down through the origin, so I followed the graph until it was heading down, and that distance is 2 pi. And my amplitude was 3, so that's not too bad. So here, this is, jot this down. To find the phase shift, look for the first zero for the first max left of the y-axis. By the way, if it's heading up through the origin, there is no phase shift. To find the period, pick a point and find the distance along the x-axis that it takes to see the same point heading in the same direction. In this case, I started at the origin and I looked right until I saw it decreasing through the x-axis again. And then what do we do with all that? Well, amplitude is the absolute value of A, so A is 3 because the amplitude is 3. Period is 2 pi over B, our period was 2 pi. So I put 2 pi here because the period was 2 pi. I set it equal to 2 pi over b, so obviously b has to be 1. Again, you can multiply by b and divide by 2 pi, but that b is 1. Phase shift is negative c over b. So my phase shift was negative pi, so I set that equal to negative c over b. Now again, you just solve for b. Don't confuse b with the period. b is 1. In this case, the period is 2 pi. And so I multiply both sides by 1, negative 1, and I get c to be pi. So we have a, b, and c, and what do we do with that? We put it in an equation. Y equals 3 sine x plus pi. A positive, my B was a positive 1, and this is the least positive real value for C. And as I've stated before, there's an infinite number of trig equations that would work, but this one fits the bill. Let's do some more. Find the amplitude period and phase shift, and then find the equation in the form of Y equals A sine BX plus C. All right, well, let's see now. It looks to be the amplitude is 2, so my A is 2. And see this max right here at the y-axis? I'm just going to go to the right until I see another max. Ah, right there. And there I read my period. My period's pi. All right.
right? And then again, my phase shift, it's the first zero before the first, up oh, there it is right there. And so we need to figure out what that is. And again, if this is pi, that would be pi over two, this would be pi over four. So my guess is that's negative pi over four. Let's take a look. Ooh, nice arrows. So the period is from peak to peak. The phase shift is go left, go left until you see the first zero on the way up. Again, if it's heading down, keep going. You, you gotta find the first zero on the way up. So the amplitude is two, the period is pi, and the phase shift is negative pi over four. And what do we do with that? Well, A is two. The period is two pi over B, so I let the period be pi. I multiplied by B, I divided by pi, my B came out to be two, which I need in the next calculation. The phase shift is negative C over B, so I put negative pi over four, which is the phase shift that we found. Negative C over B, I multiply both sides by negative two, and oh, here I must have cross multiplied. I'm sorry, I cross multiplied, I and I got rid of the negatives all in one fell swoop there. Cross multiplied, got rid of the negatives. Four C equals two pi, and I divided by four, and I got pi over two for my C value. Put it all together, y equals two sine two x plus pi over two. Let's keep going. Same deal. Looks like my amplitude is four. My period ah, is 2. That's my period 2. And there's no phase shift. Look, it's going up to the origin. So there is no phase shift. The period is 2. Ah, we just showed that, didn't we? The amplitude is 4, and there is no phase shift. Let's do some math. Amplitude is absolute value of A, so A is 4. No one ever misses that. The period is 2 pi over B. So set 2 equal to 2 pi over B, and cross multiply and b comes out to be pi. Now the phase shift is zero, so c is zero. Put it all together and you've got y equal four sine of pi x. It doesn't have to have a phase shift. I think if you ever find your um, if you ever find your phase shift being equal to your period, which is what you would have found here, had you gone left, oh look at there it is right there. And if that gets me a little nervous when my uh, when my phase shift starts looking a lot like my period. Alright, so Scientists sometimes use these formulas, so the sine curve, to simulate the temperature variations during the day. Actually, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of things in science that use sine curves. This just happens to be one of them. So F of T is the temperature. That's really why, if you think about it. A sine BT plus C plus D. Now, a few things you need to get in order here is that time is in hours. The temperature is F of T. It's measured in Celsius. That's actually the temperature of science. Now t equals zero corresponds to, mil to, to midnight, so this is going to be military time. And the temperature has to be decreasing at midnight for these to work. Now I know that's not 100% true, but for these to work, that's what we want to do. We're going to sketch the graph, uh, the function, uh, for zero to 24 hours. We're only going to talk about today, and there's 24 hours in a day, so every 24 hours this thing's going to repeat itself. And we're going to determine the values of a, b, c, and d that fit the information. Now our period is 24 because every 24 hours this thing is going to repeat itself. All right, let's look at our first one. The temperature varies between 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius, and the average temperature of 20 degrees first occurs at 9 a.m. Now these will all be really nice numbers for our purposes. So here's the graph. Um, I put 24 down here. 6, 12, 18, 24. Remember these always move in quarter period increments. The average temperature was 20 degrees. So you could actually put a dotted line right here through 20, because that's your new average. And they told me at 9 a.m. our temperature was 20 degrees. So I came here halfway between 6 and 12, and I put the 20 in. Now remember, every six hours, this thing's gonna move from an average to a max down to an average. And as I went backwards here, I had a choice. I could have gone down to a min, or I could have gone up to a max and had this thing looking opposite. But there was a rule that said that at midnight, and that's when x is 0, it has to be heading down. And so I had to, as I backed up here, I had to go down. But look, these, these big dots are 6 hours apart. So this was 9 a.m. There's 3 a.m. There's 9 a.m. And then... Sorry about that. There's 9 a.m. And then there's 
15, I added 6, and then I added 6 again, and there's 21. All right. Now let's go to that one. All right, your amplitude. Now here you see I've dotted a line in here, and here you see I put in that marker there to show us that point that was at 9 a.m. Our amplitude is 10. A lot of people think the amplitude is 30. Amplitude is from the average to the max or the average to the min. So our average is 20, our max is 30, so our amplitude is 10. So A is 10. Now the period is 24. I gotta tell you folks, the period is always gonna be 24. So look what your B comes out to be, pi over 12. Your B will always be pi over 12 because the period is always 24. Write it down. The average temperature is 20, and so D is 20. So this function has that plus D, and all that does is raise the graph up or drop the graph down, and that'll always be your average temperature. The hassle seems to be finding the phase shift so we can find C. Phase shift. Normally, the sine curve goes up through the origin. Well, let's call that up through the average, right there at x equals zero. Well, it's not going up there. If we move to the right, look, right there it's going up. And that's when x was 9. So again, normally the sine curve goes up through the average when x is 0. I look to the right until I see it going up through the average, and I read my phase shift right off the x-axis. Don't assume they're always going to hand it to you. So in my case, my phase shift is 9. So 9 is equal to negative c over b. b is always going to be pi over 12. Multiply both sides by pi over 12. See what I did there? I multiply both sides by pi over 12. The pi over 12s cancel, and you end up with 9 pi over 12, which reduces to 3 fourths pi. And I move the negative over, so it's negative 3 fourths pi. In these examples, c will always be negative, because I'm not talking about yesterday. We're only talking about today. So the phase shift has to be positive in these science problems, which means we're always going to have a negative value for c. Put it all together, and the temperature is equal to 10 sine pi over 12 t minus 3 pi over 4 plus 20, the average. There's your amplitude. It's always going to be pi over 12 t. It's always going to be minus c in this case, so a negative 3 pi over 4 plus or minus, depending on the, whether the average is above or below the 0, plus the average. Let's do another one. Let's guess the graph and determine a, b, c, and d. So the high temperature of 18 occurs at 2 p.m., that's 1,400 hours, and the average temperature of 12 degrees occurs six hours later. So here's my curve. The average temperature was 12. The high temperature was 18. Now that difference is six, so I took six off of 12 and I got my min down here. So if the average is 12 and the max is 18, that means the low had to be six. Now again, this is my new average. So we came here at 1,400 hours, and we put the max. Now, this is pretty easy, because you go back six hours, you had to go to the average. You go down six hours again, or go over six hours, you had to go down to the min. So we're here at 1,400 hours. We back it off to 8 a.m., and then we back it off to 2 a.m. And again, we're always moving back six hours, or moving forward six hours at a time. And so my average is right through here, so I'm guessing right there is going to be my phase shift, because that looks like it's going up through the average. But let's take a look. All right. Well, I put it all together here, didn't I? There's my average. And sure enough, if you come down, 8 seems to be my phase shift. Now, the difference between 12 and 18 is 6, so my amplitude is 6. The average temperature is 12, so D is 12. My period, I put this in again, but you know, folks, the period is always going to be 24. So therefore, B will always be pi over 12. Phase shift. My phase shift was 8, so I set that equal to negative c over pi over 12. Multiply both sides by pi over 12, and you end up with 8 pi over 12, which reduces down to 2 pi over 3. Move the negative over, and c is negative 2 pi over 3. Put it all together, and your function, your temperature is 6 sine pi over 12 t minus 2 pi over 3 plus 12. There's your a, there's your b, there's your c, which will always be negative, and there's your average temperature. Hey, this concludes lesson 11. Get to work.